What is the toughest weight class of 2021? I'm here to give you the definitive answer. 165 pounds is the toughest weight class of the season. Now, you may say 125 is the toughest. Spencer Lee, nobody's getting above him. 133 is the toughest. It's nuts right now with, with Dayton Fix, uh, with RB Wiley. Like, anything could happen there. You may say it's heavyweight with Gable Stevenson. Uh, okay, I'm taking this pr- from the perspective that anybody could win it, but the, the amount of talent there makes this weight class so darn tough. So what does make this talent, this weight class so tough? And one of those is the talent, but the other thing is past history. So this weight class in particular has a past history, which I think makes it even more exciting, is it's so tough to win and win multiple times. You know, Vincenzo Joseph, looking back a couple years ago, first had the big pin as, as a freshman over Isaiah Martinez in the finals over Imar, crazy, and then just a couple years later, Makai Lewis had the big upset win as a freshman over Vincenzo Joseph, who's going for his third title. Now, granted, during this time, you know, Vincenzo was a number three seed, who actually beat Mass in the semis, which I think is kind of funny to look back on that. Makai was the number eight seed, so each of these guys were positioned to actually do well and have a run. When we look at guys this year, uh, like, you know, I, I came and mean who's a freshman, or Joe Lee, who's a freshman. It's going to be a little bit tougher for them, who right now are sitting at number 14, number 15 in the country, and would likely have a number two or number three seed right in the first, second round, or in the second round. So that'd be a little bit tougher for them. But the past history, I think, is what makes it exciting and makes it fun, because what if a freshman does win this again? It really just shows the 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 pedigree of 165 in the Excitement there. Uh, the returning talent also makes it fun. Makai Lewis, the returning national champ, who was unfortunately injured by Jake Wenzel in the pit in Virginia Tech duel just recently. And I hope that Makai does get better, but that will make it fun if if he does get back onto the mat. Alex Marinelli, a multiple-time All-American. Shane Griffith, who's been riding a 33-match win streak, hasn't really had his chance at the national tournament yet, and I hope he does this year. Even other guys with returning talent with Anthony Valencia, Ethan Smith, and others who are round of 16 or, or, or blood round guys. The third reason is there's a lot of new talent. You know, I mentioned the freshman thing happening with Mackay and with Vincenzo, but with the new talent, with Griffith, Whitlake, Bronigal, Will Formato, Peyton Robb, and you may be saying, well, all those guys aren't freshmen. No. They're not, but they haven't got a chance to wrestle in the NCAA championships yet because it was taken from them last year. So that's part of it. But then, you know, you do have the freshmen who have been pulling upsets this year. And I think that's another big reason is with Andrew Sparks beating Peyton Robb first match of the season. Kim Amin recently beating Joe Lee. And yeah, it was a freshman over another freshman, but still impressive. And then before I get into why this is such a battle this year at 165, like, all the craziness that has been happening at 165. I want to talk about the wide array of tough wrestlers across all the conferences. Because there have been quite a few of... Or there there are so many tough wrestlers across every single conference. I mean, look at these rankings here with Makai Lewis at the top. Uh, which, which, I'll be honest with you, let's get into that for a second. Should Makai still be at the top even though he lost to Jake Wenzel? No, I don't believe so. He He lost. And that was a legitimate loss. Yes, it was an injury default where Jacob Wenzel took the win over Makai. Now, he was beating him before that, 3-0. to zero. And uh, the rankings that I use are actually Flow Wrestling's rankings who have Makai sitting at number one still because, they don't, because they're like, oh, anything could have happened after that. Yeah, okay, but Jake Wenzel got the, he got the win. And he was up ahead in that match. It's not like... We were 30 seconds in, nothing happened. Okay, then I would understand. But anyways, that's my side for that. In the ACC, Makai and Wenzel should be an interesting story. Big 10, Alex Marinelli and Ethan Smith. Pac-12, Shane Griffith, Anthony Valencia. Bump it down. Big 12, Travis Whitlake. And the SoCon, Will Formato. I mean, there's just a wide array of talent throughout the entire NCAA, and I think that's what makes it so darn difficult is because there's so much that can happen in the ACC in particular, which is why this battle is, is, like, why is this battle still bubbling? Like, why is 
this the just the beginning of the battle in the ACC. It's going to be a bloodbath. First of all, in the just in the ACC, it's going to be an absolute bloodbath. When so with that recent win over Mackay, the returning. And Wenzel's actually the returning ACC champ. Mackay is the returning NCAA champ. Super fun to note. But the other things going on in the ACC are just as exciting. Jake Keating of Virginia has a recent win over Kennedy, Kennedy Monday. And Monday is somebody who has been on my watch list. I'll say that. He has been on my watch list since last year with his tech fall over David McFadden. As well as just wins earlier on in the season. But... You know, you want to talk about that. Like, that that was crazy. Monday beat Thomas Bullard earlier on the season, but then and then he had a close loss to Makai Lewis, who pulled a comeback kind of at the end of that at the end of the match there. So with all these guys, the ACC is just stacked here at 65. And that's just the ACC. Speaking of Makai Lewis, Marinelli's been hungry for some Makai Lewis. Ever since his loss to him in the NCAA quarterfinals by a close takedown, he's been wanting that match. You know, Marinelli, unfortunately, has been somebody that's kind of underperformed at NCAAs, but I don't see that from him this year. He is determined. He's hungrier than ever. Unfortunately, he's been struggling with the virus a little bit, you know, within the program. But returning from as a Big Ten champ, he is a he is the guy to watch this year in, in as well as some of these other guys, but Marinelli is, you know, one of these guys to watch as he hasn't done it before, and this is his shot to do it. Shane Griffith, speaking of guys who have a reason to win, oh my gosh, Shane Griffith, my goodness, he has more of a reason to win than anybody, really. I mean, Stanford shutting down their program at the end of the season, so unfortunate to see that. He's really a hot commodity. I mean, Imagine if he wins it this year, going back to his program and saying, and just the coaches being able to say, you're going to shut down our program when we raise $12 million, which is another thing, like not really in relation to this, but they raised $12 million. It's crazy to help bring back the program. And we have an NCAA champion if Shane Griffith was to win the title this year. I mean, that's just crazy. And, and just in the last season, he had wins over Whitlake's schedule Smith Monday he has those that pedigree of wins and he has he's riding a nice winning streak and then I think the other thing about 165 and why the battle is just beginning it's it's the beginning of the battle is that these freshmen will be on the hunt you know I mentioned the Makai and Chenzo thing with them winning as freshmen but Kim Amin who I think has been primed for a breakout and kind of got it last week against Joe Lee I still think that he needs to prove himself a little bit more with wins over other proven guys in college. Uh, Joe Lee, Andrew Sparks, Keegan O'Toole, Garrett Ninehouse. These are all guys who will be looking for early upsets at the NCAA tournament. And if these guys can do something special in their conference championships, it should be good to watch. I mean, guys have been going through different training circumstances this year. Look at Michigan, who was shut down for two weeks. Look at Iowa, who has currently been shut down for a little bit. And we see teams pulling out, like Davidson is already pulling out. This is the year to win it, and at 165, anything can happen. In my opinion, 165 is the toughest weight class in the entire NCAA this year. If you like this clip and are looking for more wrestling news and discussion, I recommend you check out the full Fanco Wrestling Show podcast, which is live on this YouTube channel every single week. You can click here to subscribe to be notified of new and upcoming videos, or you can check out the Fanco Wrestling Show on your favorite podcasting platform to listen on the go. Stop stalling and start listening today.